Hi guys, Mark here. Welcome. Today we're covering a versatile globe knot. What makes this knot so useful is that you can use it in projects covering a sphere as well as a cube. We're going to be tying our globe knot on a four pin mandrel. So it has a total of four columns. One, two, three, four. For the cordage, I'm going to be using a single strand of 95 cord, a total of 10 feet. The core for our knot can either be a sphere or a cube, in my case, a die. Our final supply is a lacing needle. The pin setup for this knot is extremely simple. Rows C, D, E and F are filled out. So in practice, you can see that the innermost two rows on either side of our mandrel have the pins protruding out. So rows C, D, E and F. With our mandrel set up, we grab our cord, fold it in half. We're going to be using half of our cord to tie our globe knot. The other half, for now, we're going to coil up. With the coil done, we grab our working end, we pass it through the hole in our mandrel. So this is near the starting position, which is C1. We grab our working end and attach a lacing needle. The run list for our knot is visible on the screen, so you can simply follow it line by line. Alternatively, follow along with me tying. We begin our tying at C1, moving to E3. From E3, we move to D4, from D4 to F2. From F2 to C4, going under 1. From C4, we move to E2. From E2 to D3, going over 1. From D3 to F1, going under 
Andover. From F1, we move to C3, going over, then under 2. From C3, we move to E1, going over under. From E1 to D2, going under then over to from d2 to f4 Going under over under over then from F four to C two going over under over, then under 2. From C2 to E4, going over under over under then from e4 to d1 going under over under over then from d1 to f3 going under over under over and under we are now at our final pass, moving from F3 back to C1, going over under, over under, over under reaching C1. We place our working end alongside the standing end, tying our knot. So once the working end passes alongside the standing end, we're going to begin doubling up our knot. Undo your coil, Pull the cord through this hole at the start, 
reattach your lacing needle onto the standing end. Then simply follow your previous working end through the knot, doubling your knot up. So once the two ends meet up again, you have a two-pass knot. We continue by sinking in all of our screws. Then we're going to tighten up our knot before moving it onto our core. With the screws sunk in, we're going to begin by pulling slack from one end into the other. So we go through the entire knot, gathering up slack, then moving it into the other end. I'm going to repeat this process two, maybe even three times before I transfer my knot onto the cord. The point here is to remove as much slack as possible so that the tightening process on the cord is as easy as possible. After tightening up our knot on the mandrel, we slide it off, place it onto our core, shape it around our core, then begin tightening up. Again, just like on the mandrel, we're going to begin from one end, going through our knot, removing slack into the other end. Now this process will need to be repeated a total of two to three times. The result should be a fairly tight knot, but not too tight since we need to work in a third pass into our knot. With the basic two pass tightening done, we're going to work in an additional pass into our knot. This is not only going to fill out any gaps, but also tighten up our knot a bit further. So simply go through the knot, tripling it up until you reach your standing end.
Once the knot is tripled up, you can place it between a couple of planks and simply shape it up. By doing this, you are conforming the knot to the core, giving it a lot more of a cube-like look. So this is optional, do it if you so choose. So, that's our knot. Guys, I would like to sincerely thank you for joining me in this tutorial. I hope that I made it clear enough. I tried, I hope I did good.